post-stage transport demand model, which can come up and check out the simulation which uh, occur for this. And again, before we go ahead, let us check. Uh, most of you are familiar that uh, Python is a good language. And, and so on. It depends on the user what uh, what language you prefer and what kind of uh, usages you could have based on these. SPSS is also a statistical software which gives us regression analysis and all kinds of uh, statistical uh, outputs. Cube is a wonderful software. Yes, we'll be talking about some of the softwares which are used in this domain which have been developed and what kind of output they give us. Now, let us check out a basic or a, or a simple uh, transport model that I was able to create uh, just a few months back. And this was for uh, the case of Oslo. And well, well the project was for uh, Jan Bana Direktorate, that is the railway authority of Norway, and they had provided us with uh, the data for Oslo. And you can see these desire lines which indicate how many people are traveling from one city subdivision to another, and the thickness indicates the number of people traveling. So OD uh, matrix is what you would call this kind of data. How much data was provided and for what amount of duration and what have, uh, for example, the mode of transport or the purpose of the trip, or if you have exact geo coordinates from where people are traveling from and to, then you would be able to generate a more detailed model and have a better simulation providing insights into what could be uh, for a, a future or, or have scenarios in real world which we'll be discussing. Now, these models, like we discussed, are mathematical equations. So if you have number of trips, you would base, base these number of trips on various parameters. And these are the parameters which, and there are hundreds of parameters available uh, to you as well online. And you have to check which are the parameters which provide you with a good correlation. If I choose something that is not relevant to the number of trips, it it does not make sense in developing a transport model. It won't give you a good fit. And I'll discuss what good fit means. But mm -hmm. these were the parameters. So for example, if I say that from subdivision A to subdivision B, people are traveling or there is or coming back to A, then it is because of the population at the origin. If if there are more people at the origin, there will be more people going from a certain subdivision to a subdivision, then there will be more number of people arriving in that subdivision. Income levels play a role. Urbanization, similarly, how much is the built up area? If, if half of the area is underwater, then it, it doesn't makes sense people won't go there or if it is a forest area as we have in this case people won't be traveling too much to that to that subdivision and lastly the cost of transport cost of transport is directly proportional to the distance traveled but it is also in inclusive of the waiting times and and other uh, topographical uh, features of geography this is a uh, now, most of the work that I have done is uh, based in Python because uh, I, I have been good in that. And this is uh, the shortest trip that is from one subdivision to another subdivision. So what I, what you would do is you would have a subdivision, you would identify the centroid, you would develop a connector to the nearest node that is on the road network and then assign the number of trips to that path and then check the shortest route to all the other subdivisions from that node and you would similarly iterate that for all the subdivisions 
in that manner so so there are various algorithms available one of them is yeah you use one algorithm and you assign the number of trips to these paths so that you find how many people are traveling on each of these uh, road segments and these are just the shortest routes but uh, network analysis allows you to have an insight into which of these intersections on the whole of the transport network would you find congestion so this is edge based between a centrality this is vertex based and here you will find which vertex or node or intersection has most number of vehicles passing through it so you would know that this place would have either maximum emissions maximum road width they should have or or other sorts of things now we did not have uh, the trip purpose or the mode of transport in this data which is why this was a very simplistic model which makes me very uh, easy for me to explain it to you and like i said we will be uh, checking out the gravity model which is one of the spatial interaction models and here what it says in these equations is that the number of trips are directly proportional to the population at the origin and directly proportional to the employment at destination and in one model when uh, we have an od matrix that is origin destination matrix where we have uh, outgoing trips from a particular origin and incoming trips to a particular destination we we get that kind of uh, matrix where we say okay people are going from here to here and how many people are going here to here how many people are going and so on and so forth so we have that matrix and to modify these results into these equations we need to have an understanding of linear algebra which you which you did in in, in your 10th standard but uh, yes this was done in uh, basic python i did not reinvent the wheel but i used uh, different packages which would allow me to uh, acquire the the od matrices into into my required result states for these equations and this is the kind of result that you get now uh, this is a regression kind of analysis that is the number of trips is uh, identified as a result of push and pull for the different subdivisions so this is uh, this is the singly constrained and this is the double that is it pushes as a as a weightage in comparison with other subdivisions and it pulls these subdivisions have destination uh, as destinations have a pull weightage which is in negative so we have in comparison how does a particular subdivision pull the number of people uh, into into themselves so something of this kind is uh, worked out when we use poisson regression fit because it's a right skewed model and we have a lot of zero trips within the subdivisions but this allows us to do something this is not important the output is important that is we have uh, certain scenarios which we'll have a look at and see how we can identify the number of trips and how many people are actually on the road on the road segment uh, at a particular amount of time now this is a special interaction model i checked out its results i was not uh, well happy about those results so i worked out my own machine learning based model which gave me a better fit that is when i input my parameters i would get the exact number of trips which are on the roads at that time and uh, for which i had the date and i could input more than one parameter 
Now, again, we'll discuss how these parameters would help us getting the simulations that we are interested in. But uh, we have to check if there is an overfit or if there is uh, certain other issues that we have uh, in, in machine learning model. And of course, if you study a bit about those kind of uh, algorithms, you would, you would uh, be able to understand what uh, this all means. But basically it means that the data does not, the predicted data by the gravity and the machine learning uh, algorithms do not strictly follow the spikes or the outliers in the data. Now, what goes on behind? How do we understand what is happening in our data? And for that, uh, we have sensitivity analysis. And what this graph means is if I vary a particular value of my parameter, how does the trip prediction vary? That is the number of trips. How do they vary from the original? So if we have cost of transport, if I reduce the cost of transport, the number of trips would increase. And that's logical. But this tells us exactly how much would it increase if I Uh, charges introduced in the city or if we have fuel prices going up then we would know how much exactly would the number of trips reduce by when there's a certain increase or decrease similarly for population and built area we see an increase in the number of trips when we increase employment or the built area so urbanization leads to an increase in the number of trips but interestingly enough we have income when we reduce the income we have more number of trips which tells us something it tells us that people in this area maybe they're working out two jobs or they are not going to a particular place and just staying there for their job when the income levels are low so so again it's logical but when the income level increases the number of trips does not vary. So, so this is between two of the subdivisions. This gives us an idea about how, uh, how, how the trips would vary and what kind of characteristics do the trips have for these subdivisions. And uh, this is the scenario analysis, which tells us about, uh, this is a comparison between gravity and machine learning model, basically. And we can see that uh, again, when I'm reducing the cost of transport, how my for different subdivisions, and these are from one of the subdivisions. So this is the gravity model, which gives me the prediction results, which tells me if I increase or decrease a particular parameter, be it cost of transport or be it population. So say this, uh, colony which is going to be developed in one of the subdivisions in the city, how would the uh, number of trips vary to or from that subdivisions on the roads? That is what is uh, predicted by the model. And so it goes on and we'll see a, a, an actual uh, scenario where we see real world uh, prediction and simulation in just two slides. Now, this is the intertrips that is within the subdivision. How do the trips vary when I increase the population or decrease it? And the machine learning model is able to give me this kind of simulation results uh, of, of prediction, but uh, the gravity model does not because the cost of transport in the denominator would be zero when the distance would be zero because I'm considering the distances from the city center or the centroid of the zone to another centroid of the zone. So these are the inter trips. So that is one of the uh, plus points or advantage. This is the dashboard. So let me show you. This was the final outcome, I would say. And what I did was the model which I developed I was able to host it on a cloud technology like IBM Watson because 
basically double spread uh, purchase Tabby and Watson uh, so that it would serve as a back end. And this is the front end where we uh, are able to perform simulations. And these are the different parameters that we have considered. So employment, like we saw during the COVID times, people are working from home which means that the employment would no longer hold in that particular subdivision people since they're working from home. So if we know that 50% of the people are working from home, we would reduce the employment for that subdivision by a certain percentage. So this is 43, I would just have a reduction of almost 50% saying that employment for this subdivision has reduced. I could in include as many parameters as I want, not just in one subdivision, I could have income levels increasing or decreasing, urbanization, new buildings coming up, cost of transport going up as a result of congestion pricing and so on, and all the other policies that I can think of and or just remove them and analyze. Now what this would give me is a visualization in these, uh, in, in these maps. So I would be able to see exactly how many people are coming in and going out and currently. And after I analyze over here, how many people or how are the flows varying as a result of the scenario that we have. And this is for two visualizations. This takes time, so I would just explain it over here. This is how we can see on each road how many people would be uh for that for that uh, month or for that uh, week day and it gives us a pretty detailed uh visualization as well as results here you can see that i have included uh, multiple parameters their existing value the modified value and the variation so we can have as many scenarios built into and run all of those and see which of the roads would have more uh congestion or if the policy that I have uh, tried to implement would work or not because of the model. This would not have been possible in the classic uh, Excel based analysis, for example. And so this makes some sense to use transport modeling for our city development or urban development uh, applications. This is how, by the way, uh, I know that at least Norway and Sweden work their planning. They do not uh, give the building plan approvals without analyzing it out to check if uh, the, the resulting population would result in chaos on some particular street or so. Now, that was uh, a case study. Uh, I'll be finishing up, so I hope this is what I've been working on currently, and it is regarding the autonomous vehicles. This bus uh, by Scania is an autonomous uh, public transport, which has been running on the streets of Stockholm for about a year. This is another uh, short uh, shuttle transport, which is also an autonomous, that is self-driving vehicle. And what you do here is basically you have a, a different kinds of sensors, basically lidar based sensors, which is they send a laser back and forth and identify the features around you per time. And when you do that, you get uh, the vehicle which is trying to understand different different services around if there's a tree if there are clouds in the sky if there are any road signs anyway if there's a road crossing sorry footpath crossing or anything of this sort and this gives us uh, the possibility that future transport would be very much different it might be the case and the government is trying to make it the case that people will stop buying private vehicles. They would rely on these autonomous vehicles because 
well 95 percent of the time almost your vehicle private vehicle it sits in the parking garage or on on the road and if we have shared mobility it could definitely reduce a lot of uh, transport so for example we have 45 more than 45 percent of road uh, or transport land use in our cities as a generic thumb rule and if that reduces by any amount perhaps we won't require the metro lines which, which we are investing so much into or other infrastructures but we would definitely need to do these attitudinal or behavioral choice modeling and uh, root choice modeling so that we can integrate these vehicles autonomous vehicles into the public transport so that we can have uh, end to end seamless transport for our for our cities and it's it's really important how the model uh, can be used to do something like that but the real question is is this applicable for india and i uh, while i was working i have been able to find a study which was conducted for jakarta this is not for autonomous vehicles but this is this is this is used uh, for general applications and it is an agent based model so we can have agents uh, which is uh, based on trip purpose or more and we can have a simulation which could give us which part of the city is congest congested or where we could have uh, congestion pricing so that there is a reduction in the number of people trips going on in that area of the uh, city or on the on that road segment and so on and so forth so it has to be simplistic enough so that it could uh, simulate your scenario for the city and this is uh, well it's there are so many softwares which are available in the market uh, we have these even in india not like uh, we don't have any cube is a very impressive software and it it uh, looks like uh, arcgis somewhat but it does transport modeling i work mostly on trans omnitrans where uh, we can have as many scenarios and data being fetched directly using APIs and and so on. We would need to uh, code a bit in, in this, but what we saw here, this one, it was uh, Omnitrans and it was uh, based on Matson, which is a Java based software. So you can just go on and check out If you want to pursue your thesis into this, trying to understand if Indian scenario is ready for something like this, I would be more than happy to uh, assist you or help you out in, in your questions. But yes, that uh, I might have gone in the flow and well, I'm passionate about my work. <laughs> that was all. Thank you guys. If you have any questions about it, or if you have any comments, uh, please feel free to pass them on. Or if you already have, uh, I think you could just switch on or unmute yourself. Come forward. Yeah, uh, Pragati, please coordinate the question answer session. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 